You probably know what this is, but if you don't, it's a check valve. I got this at a plumber supply for 16 bucks. What a check valve does, it only lets water flow one way. See the arrows on it? That's the only direction water will flow. If you look in there, there's like a flapper in there. So welcome back everybody, Mike here. Today I just have a quick little video on a siphon system. If you need to move water and your outlet end is lower than your inlet, a siphon is a great way to go. Everybody knows that. However, sometimes it can be a kind of a pain in the neck getting it started and getting it running, but uh, I have a really good way to do that. And what I'm trying to do down here is lower the water level in the pond about a foot and a half, two feet before it rains again. The trash rack out there is all plugged up. If you watched yesterday's video, I'll put that right here you'll see what I'm talking about. And this summer I'm gonna fix this and change this all around so I don't have to deal with this anymore. But what had happened is we had a bunch of flooding and snow melt, the water came over the dam and it could have got pretty bad. I could have lost a pond. So all I'm doing here today is a little insurance policy. I'm gonna lower the water level a couple feet. Once I can get out there, I'll clean that rack off and I should be good until spring, summer, when I can fix this thing. But anyway, let me show you how this system works. You can see out there where the uh, standpipe is. It looks like a beaver hut or something there. It's a mess. But anyway, the way this siphon works, that end, you have a check valve. So that prevents water from going back into the pond. It will only let water come this way. Right here is where you charge the system. And uh, the only reason I put this pipe on right here is just so you don't have to bend over as far when you're filling it. Another good thing to do is you can put a, a check valve on here instead of this plug. And a check valve works well, but in the winter time, even if it's open and there's just a little bit of moisture in there, that thing will break for sure. So this time of year, I'll just use one of these. And I just screwed it to a couple boards there to keep everything the way I wanted it. And that's it. So I closed the discharge end, opened the inlet, filled it with water just from the pond with a bucket, close this up tight, you don't want it sucking air. Now we'll go down to the bottom and open it up. So now all I gotta do is open this up.
So remember, at your inlet end, you need a check valve. So when you're charging the system, the water you're putting in the inlet is not just running into the pond. That keeps the water from doing that. At the outlet end, you need a uh, cap or a plug or ball valve or something like that to close it up while you fill this up, charge the system. Once it's filled up, close this tight, open the outlet, and you're moving water. So anyway, this is a very cheap and easy way to move water. I used a two inch pipe here, and it moves quite a bit of water, but you could use any size pipe that you wanted, and it will work exactly the same way. So, you know, if you're trying to get water for your garden or whatever, there's a thousand different reasons you'd want to move water. Uh, this is a pretty good system. As long as your outlet end is lower than your inlet end, this is the way to go. And I don't have to come down here and keep, you know, filling up the pump with gas or anything like that. This thing will run until the water level gets below the inlet and it will shut off. If I want to shut it off before that, all you do is open that inlet cap, open it up, it'll start sucking air, and it'll shut off. Uh, but that's it. So if you enjoy these videos, please click subscribe, hit the like button, and share them with your friends. Thanks.